Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the first edition of After Dark here at Chess 24. I'm Lawrence Trent, and I'm your host for today. And if you're, if you're wondering, what is this? What's going on today? Well, we have a very special occasion. We've got two of our fabulous authors in the building, and we are going to have a chat about life, chess, love, whatever it may be. And it's going to be a nice, well, we're going to say uh, for the next considerable period. I mean, we're not, we're not going to put a time frame on it exactly, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So thank you for joining us. And let me introduce our guests, of course, that would be useful. If you haven't seen the announcements either on Twitter or via other social media, perhaps on our Chess24 page, we've got two of the loveliest ladies in the world of chess. That is no exaggeration. To my right, we have Sopiko Guramishvili. Hello, everybody. Glad Sopiko. To be here. Sopiko you. is here in the building. Sopiko, um, we're going to come to you in a minute, but we have to introduce <laughs> our other top guest today, Anna Rudolph. Hello, really Anna. Nice to be here. I'm sandwiched in between two <laughs> stars. I feel like I'm, you know, a black hole. Is that right? Is that what happens with the black holes? I try to make a, you know, I'm not good at those jokes. What can I say? Um, anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to find out a bit about these two lovely girls uh, who are um, very strong chess players, as you may already know. We're going to talk a bit about their lives, how they got into chess, what they like doing, all of these kind of things, perhaps all of the things that you wanted to find out about them that you never really had a chance to do before. Even I'm going to find out a lot of interesting stuff. And we're going to be taking questions throughout the show. So please uh, send us your questions via the uh, live chat that we have in the uh, on the Watch Live page on Chess24. I know a lot of you are already doing that. And if you've commented already in the article, uh, which was the precursor to this lovely day, then we will try and address the best questions there. We are going to take questions from our premium users first. We're going to give them priority. That's why they are premium users. And if you're not a premium user, well, become one, and you'll be able to ask questions for future events like this. So I'm excited. I've never been a talk show host, so I'm, I'm normally the one talking about chess, but now we're going to be talking about life. So I think we're going to start. I'm, I'm right-handed, so my, <laughs> my natural, my sort of the force is pulling me sure. this way. We will come to you in a minute. I can understand it. Anna, we have got Sopico. Sopico, I've read your biography. Really? I'm very impressed. You've got the job. You can start on Monday. <laughs> and um, you know we're thrilled. To, no, let's talk about uh, let's talk about you. Now you started chess at a very young age, didn't you? When I was five years old, my mother five years was old. playing chess also. Your mum was playing chess. Yeah, but uh, she didn't want me to play chess. For, what did she want you to do? For understandable reasons. You have to sit for five hours. You have to think. And She's right. <laughs> well, I don't know um, any other sport or profession but my grandma taught me droughts drafts yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that one and then i was like what are other pieces for I, and they told me that it's a chess game and actually i was going with a board mm. uh, in bed saying that i want to play chess i want to play chess and then afterwards they um, so you took the board chess. to bed with you yeah how did but I don't know, I was so interested um, in the game that... You just uh, thought, okay, I'll sleep yeah, with this. Yeah, I was just... Uh, I'll sleep with this guy yeah, here, no yeah. problem. <laughs> exactly, it was like that. <laughs> and you, you became good very quickly, didn't you? I mean, you, you, you very soon became uh, the world youth champion under 12. Right, I, I got silver there. You and got I was uh, a champion... Bomb. Under 16. Sorry, you got yeah. champion under 16, silver under 12. And bronze under 12 also in European. I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic start. I mean, I remember when I, I played these tournaments, I never got close to that. Thank so you. So already you were world under 16 champion. That must have been a huge moment for you and also for Georgia. Maybe they felt well, maybe we've got the next uh, world champion. Actually, 
we at that time we had a lot of medals. Mm -hmm. We got medal under 16, under 14, under 12. In every age group, we were getting uh, gold medals. And in Georgia, it was considered like if you have a silver medal, that's it's not, not okay. No, no. <laughs> Where I'm from, if we get a silver medal, we <laughs> we celebrate from the we shout from the rooftops. That's yeah. a huge success. But you you've know, got Georgia such chess, chess country. tradition, isn't it? Yeah. It's chess country because yeah. you've got Nona Gabdin Dishvili. I can never pronounce her name. Very good. Do Very good pronunciation. Do it for me. <laughs> Nona Gabdin Dishvili and Gabrindashvili. Maya Chiburdan. Uh, two yeah, right. women world champions. Yeah. Exactly. So, so already, you know, you, you won these championships and then you already became a women's international master in 2007. Right. Uh, and women's international grandmaster in 2009. And you yeah. recently became a fully fledged IM. Like right? you. L <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, uh, you don't have to rub it in. It's okay. Uh, yeah, Sorry. like me, in 2012. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you've got a lot of titles, a lot of medals. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, very nice. I wanted always to become international master, to cross this 2400, because I was always 2399. Mm. Then dropping twenty three ninety seven, mm -hmm. and finally I crossed uh, this twenty four barrier, but now I'm twenty three sixty seven again. Don't worry, <laughs> we all go through ups, but we'll talk. We'll talk more about your ambitions and and sure. what you want to achieve. But I think it would be nice to. I have to balance. You know, this is the. Hey there. This is this is only the second time I've been wedged in between two. I, I mean, no, I mean, I'm saying doing this kind of interview stuff. It's. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta let me feel my way. So, Anna, <coughs> Anna, 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 Anna Rudolph. Nice to meet you, Laura. Nice to meet you. What are you, what are you doing here? Oh, no, I say, um, tell us a bit about you, because you also started chess very early, didn't you? Yes, I think I was three or four years old when I mm -hmm. learned to play chess with my sister. But um, it's because of our father. He really loves playing. He's a hobby chess player. So there was always a chess set at home in the living room, and me and my sister would just. <coughs> move around with the pieces or build a, a tower Sorry. from the pieces sort of yeah. like you don't know how they move you're just how like how do you do that with chess let's pieces? do this oh i see right <laughs> so okay. i learned to play chess like this oh, but then the rules yes um it's because of the chess program battle chess i don't know if you know it i but... don't know battle chess. <laughs> tell me about battle chess when you play chess with uh, this chess program and exchange a piece suddenly the pieces become like alive they fight against each other. They I think kill, I had that. They, they kill each other. I think I had that. Was that on the Amiga or the Commodore or one of these programs? Yes, it's a, it's a very old one. It was was like it with the, the disc, the floppy disc that you had yeah, to do? <laughs> so it was I such knew, a I fascinating had that. game. And, and my father was playing with it. We were sitting on his legs watching the game, yeah. but we really wanted to play. And if you I want remember. to play with it, you have to learn the rules because the computer doesn't let you make just a random move. You have to know the rules, right. how the pieces move. So that's how it started. So battle chess was the, the, the cause of your And career, kinder chocolate, because kinder then, chocolate. then I only wanted... Tell me how kinder chocolate kinder made chocolate. you Kinder chocolate, that's very interesting. Chess. <laughs> then I only wanted to play with my sister. So my father offered us a kinder chocolate if we would uh, get the challenge of another child. Ah. We were at the, sc at the primary school chess lesson, but we were just so shy that I would only play with my sister and she would only play with me. So when he started offering us kinder chocolate, then, uh, then we thought, okay, for a chocolate, maybe we will play another game. And That's a nice, nice method. When you get to feel like this, that, oh, this, uh, it's good to win, actually. <laughs> it's good to beat others. So we started playing in competitions. There Very you go. interesting. <laughs> so everybody who thought, you know, chocolate's bad for you, it's not. <laughs> It'll help you start the game of chess. Now, Anna, you, uh, much like Sopico, your rise was quite uh, severe as a, as a youngster. You, uh, you won the European Junior Rapid Championships and the Hungarian Women's Championship. Three times you've won it, right? Yes, only. I wish I could win it more times. I'm but trying to win that's, it some, that's every quite, year. I mean, because Hungary, like Georgia, has got such a big chess tradition. Yeah, of course. Of course, because of three very famous sisters, um, who I'm sure you know very well. Yes. How, uh, how well do? You, how much was? Uh, we can talk a bit more about this, but how much was Judith an inspiration in your when you started? She was to play very chess? much an inspiration, and when I was small, she was like an idol. She and um, Judith, Leko and Portish, they mm -hmm. were my favorite Hungarian chess players and 
I Polish? Played as well, of really? course. Okay. Yeah, I have right. his book. I've studied his games and uh, I had the signature of all of them and I played a, a sign like was almost all of them. But I was just like, uh, they were my idols and I would never get to that level. And then in 2008, this is the first time I was selected for the Olympic team and they became my teammates. So oh, suddenly okay. I had dinner with them they, and they really treated me like a friend from the first moment and they are very friendly and they're very nice people. So that was such a big very change nice. in my life that they are my idols and suddenly we are teammates. Look That's at really that. really cool. Well, I can't, you know, I feel kind of a bit overwhelmed here, guys. <laughs> you've played for your national teams, you've hung out with Polgar and Polsish. <laughs> You know, I, I, what can I do? I, I hung out with my dad on the weekend playing chess <laughs> in the park. You know, this is all that. This is my education. Um, so we've established you, you two are both very strong players. You're both international masters. And uh, I think now would be a nice moment after this brief introduction that we've had to talk a bit more about you guys, perhaps put some questions your way. Now, we have been receiving a lot of questions. Um, please give me, uh, well, some lenience on, on what I cannot go through every question and as I mentioned at the top of the show we will be taking questions first from from the premium members so um, we have a lot we have a lot of different kinds of questions and remember this show if you are watching it live is not about chess positions per se we're not going to be Analyzing. You didn't like my position. Uh, your position was great, but uh, the night, I, how you got that formation, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. But we're not going to be talking about openings or anything like that. If you want to do that, what I suggest is that you check in with, for example, Jan Gustafsson in his opening clinic. Those are fantastic. But for now, we're going to talk about live subjects. So we've to talked about a lot, of, lot about chess, but Daniel Niemch, Niemch, now I know I pronounced that incorrectly, one of our premium members, I'm really sorry for pronouncing it like that. He has asked the following, and this is applies to both of you here. What other hobbies do you have? Because, you know, we're chess players, you know, a, a lot of people say, uh, chess players, especially when they're very strong, they don't really do much else. But I've got a feeling that you two girls have got more, more hobbies apart from chess. So let's go, with, let's go with Anna first. Anna, what else do you do outside of this crazy world of chess? <laughs> Of course, there are the obvious listening to music, traveling, reading books, but I also love sp sports events. I don't like to watch sports uh, on TV that okay. much, but I really like to, to visit a, a sports stadium. I like to go to the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium to watch a Real Madrid match. Um, and just before coming to Hamburg, uh, Joaquin and I went to a tennis event. Well, not a tennis event. Wait, I'm going to have to interrupt you. Tennis People event. are going to say, who's Joaquin? So we'll <laughs> come on to that. We'll come on to that a bit later. We'll come on to that a bit later. Okay, so you went to a tennis event. Yeah, and I wanted to correct the article because it's the tennis event in Madrid, uh, in the Magic Box, with all the stars playing. It was wow. such an impressive event. But actually, they, they've been playing this week, so I missed the competition, but I did see them training. I saw Nadal, Nishikori, uh, I saw Berdic uh, with Wawrinka, I saw Serena, and I really love to see them playing live. That's so you like, you, so you're a live person. You yes. like going to, to, the, to the, as you said, the Bernabeu to watch Real Madrid, yeah. to, to the tennis. Indeed. Uh, but you, you don't actually practice? No, I'm, ve I'm very clumsy. So anything that is with a <laughs> ball, if you throw a ball at me, I can't catch it. But I love watching. So what do you do in time trouble? If you, you know, <laughs> whatever, do you pick up the wrong piece? I or? can manage, but with the mouse, I'm very clumsy. So when oh. I play banter blitz or when I play simply online on Chess 24, um, there are so many mouse slips, and I, I'm really clumsy. So that, okay. that's a disadvantage of being. So left now, if we ever play, I know what to do. Okay. <laughs> Sopiko, what about you? What do you do outside of chess? Well, I love playing piano, but like very, really? very amateur like uh, on a very amateur level dancing i even took the dance. classes of latin dance latin dance yeah. would you believe it and yeah. uh, what is it about dancing that you like is it just i i love it i i feel completely relaxed free yeah. and um, that's completely another world yeah <laughs> that's beautiful so you did latin dance because but a lot of because for a, for it's, a bit, it's, for a bit, it's interesting you say that, Sopiko, because as you know, I, I like to dance myself, and um, 
I think uh, this is the moment when you two stand up and start uh, dancing. We, we would, we <laughs> would normally do. We would normally do that, but that is for the. We haven't quite created it yet, but that's for the extra super duper premium membership. <laughs> the extra, and the extra, 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 extra super, um, and we haven't invented that yet. So, but um, because the, what I was going to say is a lot of people when they think of chess players, especially strong chess players, let's not forget that you two are two of the strongest female chess players in the world. That's not Thank an you. exaggeration. You two are, are up there with the best. And they think, well, if you're really good at chess, you can't be good at other things or like other things, right? And if there's, a, there's still this stigma of, you know, how can you be a chess player and how can you I'm, love dancing. Yeah, I just love dancing. I cannot say that I'm very good <laughs> Latin you, dancer. Yeah. But I dance on my own. Um, on in my front own. of the mirror, though. Yeah, home. not not in front of Put the mirror. Put a bit mirror, of Britney without Spears any moves, on. With no. You should really sign Britney up for Spears our YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> we have a video clip coming with a, with a little bit of singing and dancing. <laughs> I really, oh, no, yeah. I really hope we can make we this really, up. We Coming really have I think fun we, in the studio. <laughs> I'm sure you do. There's a lot of the outtakes from the studio. <laughs> yeah. um, no, because it's interesting because, uh, you know, uh, I think it's great for chess. I, I think I think it's great for chess that, that uh, you know, we have two of the two, two mega talents who are, you know, let's face it, as, as the guys will find out at home, over the, this uh, this session, that you are very normal girls, aren't you? You, you do yeah. you do normal things. You like sports, and and let's let's move on, because unfortunately we're gonna we're gonna go to this now. We're gonna get it out of the way because this is the big subject that everybody wants to know, um, and everybody uh, has been commenting on in the articles. Now you mentioned Joaquin. We'll come to you in a minute. <laughs> Well, we'll go to this young I lady I know what's first. coming. <laughs> you know what's coming. Now, you are very famous in the world of chess for being the better half, as we like to call it, um, of a certain Mr. Anish Giri, who is not a bad player. He, he, he knows more or less how the pieces move. <laughs> I've seen him, you know, do some... No, he's, he's, he learned a lot from Miss Strategy. He learned a lot from six you. Videos. He's our biggest fan. Um, probably none of you guys need an introduction to Anish Giri, the Dutch number one, but also uh, very much a part of the world's elite now and looking like he's you know, he's extremely young. He's 21, if I remember correctly. Yeah. He will be 21 He'll in June. He'll be 21 yeah. in, in shortly. He's 21 in June and he's already in the high 2700s. In fact, there was a moment, I think he was about he to hit 28. 28. He, yeah. he crossed 2800 on, on the live list. Yeah. So what's it like? Then we'll take a question here. We'll take a question from Cicerone. Cicerone. So he's a premium member. Hi, Cicerone, if you're watching, I'm sure you are. When did you meet Anish for the first time and how did this whole okay. relationship begin? Actually, it was very funny because uh, once I was uh, asked by a journalist, uh, actually there's a article on chess base. Okay. I didn't have a boyfriend and how your boyfriend would look like. Mm -hmm. And I said, no chess player. <laughs> okay. Especially no 2700. <laughs> okay. Uh, he should not wear glasses. Okay. I don't know why I said it. And he should not be younger than me. Not even so that's four. 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 Okay, all right. Yeah. And so, check it out now. And now what? <laughs> so what chess is that? Player. Chess Professional player. Professional chess player. Yes. 2700, wears glasses, and is three years younger than me. Right. <laughs> so what you're saying is there's hope for everybody, yeah, right? Yeah, th that's, that's how it started. Okay. So... I met him um, yep. in 2009. Uh, at the European uh, Individual Championship, that time women and uh, men were together playing. Uh, but I did not talk to him. Um, and there then was um, in 2011 Radio Emilia. Probably Radio you, Emilia. you've heard of that. Of course, I remember the tournament there. That was a very strong little tournament yeah. that they put Super together. Super tournament yeah. for. Uh, Guys, and they did the first edition of uh, women tournament. Oh. I won the women tournament, and he won the wow. men's one. Okay, that's where it so what I started. No, but hold on a second. I want to see. Hold on. So you both won the tournament, <laughs> right? And you were like, "Hey, you know, we're both winners. Let's hook up." You no, know, let's... <laughs> no, didn't work like that. You want to hear details? <laughs> 
minor details. <laughs> yeah, minor I think details. it's interesting. No, we, want... we became very friendly yeah, okay. um, very fast, and uh, we were talking a lot um, afterwards on internet, and then we met uh, again at the tournament, and uh, okay. We felt something for each other. <laughs> they felt something. That's so romantic. Yeah. Oh, what happened? My romance. What's what's happened? I need some romance. <laughs> Tell me about romance, Anna Rudolph, about with this young man who I know very well. Well, I don't know him very well. That would, that would be a slight lie. Uh, if he's watching, I'm going to say he's hello. He's definitely watching. He's watching. Hello, Chicky. Um, I don't know Chicky very well, but we've met on a, a few occasions. He, uh, apart from playing very good football, tell us about him and how you guys met and, uh, yeah, tell us about love. <laughs> sure. <laughs> love. I met my it's boyfriend, Chiki Joaquin, yeah. um, because I was his captain. I'm the captain. You were his <laughs> captain. Yes. Even then I didn't know. You were um, his captain. I work for the Spanish Distance Education University in Madrid. And every year there's a team competition. Actually, I think you participated one year in the university championship yes. in Spain. Yes. So I'm the captain of the UNED, the Spanish Distance oh. Education University. And I had to select the players. Um, I didn't know him. And they gave me his phone number. I, I, I called him. I wrote him a mail. I wrote him on Facebook. And he was ignoring me. I, he just... <laughs> Completely didn't respond. So this is, this, hold on, this is regarding <laughs> his selection for the team? Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, I didn't right. even know him. Right, okay. So um, I already had the other players, uh, only his place was missing, and I thought, one last try, if he doesn't pick up the phone, I will choose another person. I just can't be running after him. I don't even know him. So finally he picked up the phone, he apologized for not answering, he, he was playing a tournament without internet in the hotel, and uh, finally I got him in the team. And that's how I met him. But first, of course, first we were friends, and it's just a funny story that I was his captain, and he he was <laughs> under my supervision at the <laughs> tournament. But so hold on a second. So this guy, he he really annoyed you. You couldn't catch him. You couldn't reach him. And then when you finally met him, you thought, oh, actually, he's, he was, a, he he's a good guy. Yes, because he was extremely polite. Um, nobody responded to me in such a polite way as he did, and uh, he. He's very educated and very a very nice person. So, of course, I was mad that someone is ignoring my messages and everybody wants a spot in the team because then you can get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. You can get your studies paid for the year if you get a medal. Oh, so it's really important okay. to get into the team. And he was just ignoring the opportunity. <laughs> but all was resolved. He became part yes. of the team. And now you've been uh, seeing each other. And it's that's for great. Two years. Yes. Two years. My goodness. And you have been with Anish now for a long time, no? Three years. In fact, do people know about things that are happening or not? What do you mean? Uh, she's <laughs> hiding her finger. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, people know, right? Yeah. You're getting married. I'm getting married. You're actually getting married. I'm getting married, yeah. Like now, right? I mean, like not, this not right year. Now. Like this not year. Not right now. No, because I, I wouldn't be a good like priest or something like that. We could read the rules of chess. Maybe that would be our Bible. <laughs> Do not touch a piece and move it. Do you promise? Um, you, know, um, you know, so you're getting married in July. In July, right. That's now. That's Very soon. So you're preparing for the wedding? Yeah, what I'm doing here, I have to prepare. You have to prepare for the, for the wedding. wedding. Yeah. But you've got, you've got a lot of sisters, haven't you? <laughs> Just two. Just two. That's kind of a lot <laughs> in where I'm from. You know, we we have an average of two per family, so yeah. that's a lot of. And they are both married. Right? Yeah, in our family, they told us. So two years ago, we start the marriage, and it should be in a row. My so middle this sister is... got married two years ago. Yeah, last year was uh, my uh, youngest, uh, not youngest, uh, the eldest sister's um, marriage. And this year should be mine. We should not uh, skip the year. So this was a pre... <laughs> a scheduled wedding. This was a scheduled... <laughs> okay, I'm joking. No, but, uh... I know you're joking. <laughs> but you must, be, you must be very happy. You must I be am. extremely happy. Yeah. Wow. Well, good luck. Good Thank luck you. to you. Good luck to you. Now... Let's, um, let's move on. We are getting a lot of uh, chat and, and uh, we're, we're going to try and get some good questions. But let's, 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 let's talk a bit about... This is a, this is a talk show, right? So we're going to talk about 
controversy and relevant topics in and outside of chess. And one big topic at the moment, I, I feel like I have to ask you this because it's so relevant at the moment, is that in the news, a certain grandmaster from my home country... Called Nigel Short. <laughs> called Nigel Short, made headlines, not just in chess news, but he made headlines all over the mainstream media globally about his comments on women in chess and women's capacity to play chess. Now, this topic has been talked about lots and lots of times, but I just feel like with two young women who are very strong players next to me, it would be interesting to hear your thoughts. Obviously, I'm, this is assuming you both read what Nigel said and, and heard sure. more or less what he said. So I'll go with Anna first. What is, what is your impression? Of, of the recent news. Do you think it's, it's, it helps you or helps, uh, you know, even though it's, it's um, you know, some negative uh, feeling in, in, the, in the press, do you think the fact that women's chess has been indirectly uh, talked about or, or not indirectly talked about but indirectly, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Words fail me. They often do. Uh, you know, that it's in the, in the limelight, in the spotlight. Do you think that, that it's, it's helped or, or do you feel like his comments have been detrimental for women's chess? I think it's certainly good for chess because at least chess is in the news once again. Unfortunately, sometimes it, uh, it's controversial because uh, there are some feminist organizations that attack Niger's article. I think he's partially right, because I do believe that there's a difference between men and women. By the way, if you want to read about this, there's a very good article on Chess24, written by Ilya Zaragatsky. Grandma Ilya Zaragatsky, very good article, yes. <laughs> but uh, yes, I think that um, what he says um, is true, mainly, but maybe he should have expressed himself in a better way, in a softer way. Mm -hmm. Um, what I find um, a big difficulty as a woman is that we, ha we have these mood swings and we are not always the same confident and you know these hormonal changes that sometimes you feel like I'm such a good player and there are other days when you're like oh but I have <laughs> such a lack of knowledge in this line and I lost l last time against this girl and you know it's not the same I think you guys you are more we're stable. We're more stable. In yes, okay. uh, psychologically. What about you, Sophika? What do you think? I completely agree with her because I wanted to say exactly the same. I think that um, what he said generally was um, right about differences um, in men and women, but he said it in the most harsh way. It was very rude. So you felt he was rude, but you think his he, the, the 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 content was actually sort of you know correct in some yeah. way that that men and because the, of course we have a women world championship and we have world championship we have separate section for women so it's obvious that we are not the same uh, as but do, do you men. think but the the argument about whether to have women's world championships and men's world championships perhaps is to do with the fact that, you know, that what well, the big argument as to why women have not achieved the same as men in chess is because they haven't been as exposed to chess and in the same numbers. So you could claim that men have been playing chess for much longer and there's been a much greater number, but it's only now that more women are playing and therefore it needs time. Time is required for women to to reach the same levels, um, and physically we are weaker than men. But do you think that make? Do you really believe that makes a difference? Do you really believe that physically? I mean, are you, you saying you need a lot of energy? Like, do you uh, think? Do you not ch think chess is about when you might have excellent position, right? Mm. You you doesn't happen be... to me, but I understand. <laughs> you you might be winning in thousand ways, but especially women, can find the way to lose. And we say we were very tired or there was lack of energy. And I think that men has more, more energy than uh, women. Okay. And do you think it's a nerves thing? Do you think it has also, to do? Do you think men nerves. are more, um, calm. more calm at the board? And they don't take it, uh, take it so closely. I mean, the defeats or the results, women take it more closely. Do you and, think so? Yeah. Well, I think so. 
Do you um, think? Are you not so sure about that? I think it's personal. I yeah. I think, for example, I lose very easily uh, because I I I don't mind so much. I feel like chess for me is a personal improvement. So I don't mind losing a game. What I care about is the path, and I just want to keep on improving. I just want that. But with each game, I learn something and I become a better person and a better player. But um, about men and women, it's what I mentioned. I think it's, a, it's the stability, it's the confidence that you play with. And it's not only in chess, I, I see that in other sports too, for example in tennis. You see the world's best tennis players there and some of them can collapse just, uh, just because they but, lose their but confidence. But let me ask you a question then. So I'm taking the feminist stance, which mm -hmm is not so so common for me. But the, the, what, what they say is, well, chess, it's not a physical, I mean, it is a physical game. You have to be fit. I think yeah. we've all learned from Magnus, especially, yeah. that the re one of the big reasons he's been at the top is because he can last for hours and keep the same level. But let's assume that we have a super, super fit woman player. Why would that woman not be able to compete with the men? Why, what is the difference? After all, it's not tennis because, you know, we're not hitting balls. We're sitting at the board, she's extremely fit. Is it not possible for a female player, like you did, did um, some years ago, to compete with the top players or even become a top player? Why do you, is, it, is that not possible? Of course it's possible for um, some, I mean, not for, all of us. If you take like five women, one can achieve that. But if you take like five men, I think uh, four of them would achieve the same result. But you still haven't told me why. Well. <laughs> <laughs> now this is getting tough. I don't want to put you too much on this one. I know this is a topic very much for, uh, for, 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 for specialists and experts in this, in this field, but it is a topic that is, that is interesting. I mean, let me ask you a question. Do you ever see an overall women's world champion? I mean, somebody who challenges Magnus Carlsen. Let's say Ho Yi Fan at the moment, right? She's the top women's player. Uh, she's not women's world champion, Maria Muzichuk is women's world champion, but they will play and that really will decide who is the best. Uh, I mean, many people already consider Hoi Fan because of her ELO rating, but the ultimate or the absolute women's world champion will be decided later this year. Let's say Hoi Fan were to win that and she were to qualify to play Magnus Carlsen. Do you ever see her beating Carlsen in the future? I don't see her uh, beating Carson, and I really appreciate her. I think she's an excellent player, a very strong player, but I don't think that she or any other female player in the near future can become a So you just don't champion. think it's... The, the, no. And, uh, there's something missing. My, my explanation is that Judy Fogar, the greatest female player of all mm. times, at least for me... Well, um, for everybody. I yeah, think that's without... We don't know how far who can get, who you find. Yes. But Judy... Um, She's such an intelligent person, such mm. a hardworking person. She is, she's great. And if she couldn't get it, I don't know who can. She has mm -hmm. worked her whole life to become a men's world champion. Yeah. She has an, a very high IQ, a lot of work behind her, and even like this, she got to be the world's number seven, not number one, number seven. I think there's something, we miss something. We, we don't know what We exactly. don't know that, but w there is something that's missing for sure. Okay, interesting, interesting outlook. I mean, because it, it's interesting because it also, um, you know, your perspective is very different to many others, not only in chess, but outside of chess. Many women who uh, were commenting on this subject saying, how dare Nigel say this? You know, we, we've got exactly, it, it's because of other factors. But it, it's interesting to hear your argument. So thanks for, um, thanks for that. Let's move on. Let's go to another topic before we get enrolled in this uh, controversy for the whole hour. Now, let's talk about, you. I mean, we've talked about chess, outside relationships. Let's talk about, I, I feel like I have to lean back for this, <laughs> for the next, this next question. This next question What's is from Chris Top. Chris Top, who is a premium member. Thanks for the question, Chris. He says, 
How did you guys meet and who had the idea for Miss Strategy and Miss Tactics? So let's talk about this loving relationship here and I'll just This is a very nice story chair. actually and we can, we can thank Chess24 for our friendship okay. because we were both in yeah. Hamburg recording our own series. So because I was working uh, in the morning hours and I was, Neither working, series. <laughs> I was working in the afternoon uh, on my Spanish videos and then and David Martinez had the idea that why not uh, try and these two girls could record at least a few videos together, just, just to try. So the idea was that I'm a positional player and Sopika is more of a tactical player. No, actually, she's a very tactical player. And we would just uh, get some of the Kasparov Karpov games and analyze them from these two very different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, very nice because and also scary at some point because we had these uh, games, we didn't know each other. I met her, but we did not talk that much. And there you are. You're sitting here and you have to talk about chess. Just without any analysis or preparation or anything, you just have camera in front of you and you have to explain the game. But it that was, was chemistry. Yeah, I don't know how, but <laughs> from I think even our first videos are, are great. Yeah. Not, not that uh, I they want to praise great. our videos all <laughs> the fantastic. time, but no. they turn out very well. There are some people you can work very well. If you work together with someone, sometimes it can be brilliant, and with others, it doesn't work. There's no, there's no connection. And with Sopico, what we had from the first moment on is that we could, we could uh, somehow connect. We, yep. we are meant to work together. <laughs> so you think this was destiny? That it this was, pairing it was, was destiny? That, that was definitely and destiny. Now you, and now you guys hang out. You, you have fun. I know after yeah, work you course. guys go for dinner. You, we meet uh, on tournaments also you meet in tournaments. and we're going out and we have, uh, we're talking online a lot and uh, wow. we have about really good about friendship. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so there you go ladies and gentlemen, Chess24, not only do we create brilliant <laughs> video series but we also make long lasting friendships and I'm sure a lot of guys at home who are interacting uh, through the Chess24 community are doing the same. So that's very nice. And just very quickly, the, to the topic of Miss Tactics and Miss Strategy. Let's just clarify this because they might be saying, which one's Miss Tactics and Miss Strategy? <laughs> I'm Miss Tactics. You're Miss Tactics because you're a tactical genius, right? Not genius, but uh, I love tactics. You like, you like the sharp <laughs> positions. I love sharp positions. I love to sacrifice. I love the attack and I love to give the mate. And you, Anna, you like the slow games. Structural weaknesses, oh. <laughs> play against the opponent's bad pieces. This is really my way of playing. I plan. can hear Jan Gustafsson in the background <laughs> applauding. I think. Yeah, yeah, he'll be delighted to hear that. Um, Why do you think that when we made a parody, Sopika yeah. was you and God, yeah. I was you? I thought Jan. it was because of the dark hair. Sopika has got a bit more hair than me now. <laughs> <laughs> Only a bit more. Just a bit. Just a bit. But I thought it was because of that. Oh, but it's actually because it's, of the playing it, style. It's, right. it's all about the looks it, and the style. Yeah. Oh, the, everything. Everything. Every I'm match, everything. Happy everything. With, I'm happy. Hey. All in one. <laughs> okay. Um, let's, let's move on then. And uh, we have some slightly... Let's go for a slightly out of the box. Let's think outside of the box. Let's perhaps ask you something that you haven't been asked about. Maybe you have been asked it, but maybe not in a chess program. So this is a very interesting question from Danny P215, another one of our premium members. Thanks for the question, Danny. And his question, this is for both of you, is the following. You can travel back in time. You can go to any point in history. And this reveals a lot about your personality, in my opinion. But you can only do this once, okay. Which year and where would you go to and why? Now, which year, where would you go to? So it's a bit of a tricky question. I'm going to go with Sopigo first. No. <laughs> Sopigo, you have a chance to travel back in time. You can, you can, you can it's very travel to, to the... It's very travel back in time. It, uh, yes, technically speaking, I think according also to the laws to of imagine, physics. I cannot imagine life without computers. I cannot imagine life without Facebook. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm, I'm not... No. <laughs> no. There's only a few. No, I'm just... <laughs> Well, it's really technically very difficult. To go back in time. To go back in we time. We are just assuming that 
you, we can do. So imagine we have a time machine, it's beautifully built, it's got Chess24 logos all over it, it's got a chessboard inside. That doesn't change, Chess has been around for millions of years. And we're, we're, we're sitting in there and I say, Sopico, take me, where do you want to go? Any time in the past, take me to a year. Which year? Which year or which era? It doesn't have to be a year. You could say, hey, I'd like to go back to the Roman. Can you Roman. imagine me as Egyptian or some Romanian? I could see right? you as Egyptian, yeah. Yeah, I can see you as an Egyptian sort of uh, royalty. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would You'd be Egyptian. Yeah. Because <laughs> you like the, the gold. Yeah, well. <laughs> they wore a lot of gold, very nice outfits. It, yeah. Even in ancient Egypt, it was amazing. At least for fashion. You would go back to ancient Egypt <laughs> for fashion reasons. For fashion. <laughs> Okay, ancient yeah. Egypt, okay, fine. And Anna, where would you go? It's funny because I, I also like really the ancient history and I would pick ancient Greece. But the only problem is that as a woman, if you go back in time, then you don't have the same rights, especially in the ancient era. So I would go back to ancient Greece and become a middle-aged man to be the best <laughs> Hold friend. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on, you, this isn't the question. You can't be, you, like, it's like me saying, hey, you know, I'm going to go back to the 1960s uh, you know, and, and be this famous model. I, you can't change sex. That isn't part of but the But then the question you, is not good because we, women, can only choose just the, the last couple of decades. Couple of decades. You really have to be... I okay. would really love to be in that atmosphere with the Greek philosophers well, and be the best friend of Socrates. Go, okay, that's, that's, that's a great As answer. As a middle-aged man with the same rights as but, anybody else. Nice. Well, I forgot about the whole rights thing and you know, <laughs> feminist movement. Um, yeah, well, okay, so you'd like to go back, but in an ideal world, you're saying, assuming yeah. that rights were equal, that you would go back to ancient Greece and Definitely. hang out with Socrates. Definitely. Talk about life, like you're doing now. So yeah. what's the difference? Maybe you are Aren't the we? new Socrates. Right, yeah. <laughs> if I'm the new Socrates, God help humanity. That's all I'm saying. God help humanity. <laughs> all right. Um, good question. Something very similar. It's from Danny P again. Okay. I like this question as well. This is a very nice question. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, you girls, I know you girls like to eat. Not in like, <laughs> not, not, no, what I mean is to eat well, to eat a nice <laughs> dinner. Not, not, not. Not eat continuously. Um, just eat in general. You like your nice steaks. Yeah. You went for a nice we love, steak. Yeah. We love we the steak. You went to the blockhouse. Yeah. Around. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Now, you're. You've gone to this restaurant. This is the situation. Mm -hmm. You've gone there, yeah. and you can take a few people with you. You can have dinner with whoever you want in the world, alive or dead. So you can choose. Let's say you can choose three people, both of you. You can choose three, you can choose three. Three people that you would love to have dinner with. That you would have Yeah, in the whole world, in history, alive or dead, women or men, you can choose three people. Who do you think you would love to have dinner with? If we don't know them, we don't know them. You might say some obscure Georgian folkloric musician, <laughs> for all I know. Um, so. Well. Sopika. You can give me three one name. Three people. Well, we can we can try with one name. Let's try with one because three oh, might one be too many. one that's even many. worse. I think the the more the better. Okay, or as as many as you want. In chess world, I would go. Okay, doesn't have I to be the chess world. I would have dinner with Judith because she's she's my idol. I mean. I love her. I read all her books. Uh, You've I never had dinner with Judith. No. <laughs> and I've had dinner with Judith. <laughs> yeah. And if we don't have chess world, yeah. Then um, I would like to have uh, dinner with. Actually, you saw me in a, a right atmosphere. I would go with uh, Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Royalty. <laughs> you, see? you would like to have dinner with the Queen. Why Queen Elizabeth? Why not Queen Beatrice or Queen... No, Queen Elizabeth. I really 
I would really like to have, and I was actually thinking to go to this uh, Britain's Got Talent show because then they have a show for Queen Elizabeth. They do. Don't, they have the they? royal before. They have the royal performance. Royal yeah. performance. So I would. You just want to be in the same room. I there, want right? to be in the same rooms. I want to see how she. What is it? Because you love tea. No, tea. No. I don't love. Oh, you don't love tea. No. What I, I, <laughs> you don't. Okay, to yeah. English people, yeah. we should not say that we don't oh, love course. tea. <laughs> no, but you, you, can, I, you can hate tea. I'm not going to No, I, I don't hate tea. I like tea. But uh, I want to see um, how she lives and how how would be dinner with her. And I would like to... Well, I don't think she'd go to Blockhouse. That's, I, I That's mean, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think we'd have to change the venue. But, there's uh, a good steak at the Royal Palace. I'm sure there's very good steak at the Royal I'm sure there's very, very good steak. I've never been. You never know. One day. What about you, Anna? Who would you go to dinner with? Who would you love to have? So I can choose three. You can choose three. Well, I already mentioned Socrates, that I would love to be his best buddy. Um, so you because Socrates. I'm a middle-aged man in ancient okay. Greece. But, but apart from Socrates, yeah. I would choose Gandhi. Gandhi? And uh, Pope John Paul II. Pope John Paul II, yes. Gandhi, and and you. Now, what is what is that? You're all. Hold on, let me try and make a connection here. <laughs> so you want the absolutely most ethical and uh, and just and, and just non-violent people, people in the world at dinner. Yeah. Is that because you're scared that some, if you choose somebody else, they're going to stab you with the fork? No, or? but I think uh, we can learn a lot from them. I, we, we've learned a lot from them, we've learned a lot. but it would be really interesting if we could have a conversation with them. I mean, we can read their writings. Um, there are many books about them, but in this I'm, imaginary dinner, I would really love to have a I'm trying to a picture you, Gandhi, and <laughs> John Paul II. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that could work. Can you organise it for me? I could, but I'm far. <laughs> I, I've sinned far too much to be able to organise such an event. I don't think John Ball. So who that Trent guy? No, he. he, he what? I'm He's sure going to hell. He's shows. not going to organise my dinner. <laughs> True story. Um, excellent. All right. So now we know you'd like to. You'd like the queen. So we got it here. Queen <laughs> diamonds. R Gold. Money, royalty, and I'm not about good that. People. Come on. I got it. I'm joking. Um, let's move on then. Uh, and remember to keep the uh, questions coming in the chat. I'm seeing a lot of comments. I'm not seeing so many questions though. So please, uh, please get those questions through. We have got more questions from the article though. And um, this is a question that. Uh, well, we can do this. This is Benoni. 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 I got it. I got the joke. Well done. No opening questions. Benoni, <laughs> we're just talking about the future. I know. We're talking about the past before. Let's talk about the future. <laughs> Let's talk about the future. Now, you girls are uh, professional chess players, okay? Where are you going to be in five years? Are you going to be chess players, Sopico? Are you going to be a retired chess player with <laughs> lots of children? Uh, Anna, are you going to have... Lots of children as well. I mean, can you can you see yourselves being chess players in five years and and even beyond that? Yeah, definitely. I I don't see myself as retired chess player. I'm pretty young. <laughs> you are. You're only 20, 24. 24. Okay. And I I would love. I I definitely see myself uh, in chess, playing tournaments, uh, recording videos, teaching. <laughs> And um, I want to get a Grandmaster title. So that's your big ambition, is it? You yeah. want to become a, a fully-fledged Grandmaster? Yeah. What about that's you, Anna? Is, is that something... Because Very you, similar, you yes. had a fantastic result in 2007, didn't you? Yes, I Tell almost us. got a men's Grandmaster norm there, but just almost. Um, I would also like to get the GM title if I can, but most importantly, I would love to become the number two in Hungary. Because if you're number two in Hungary, but with a high rating, that means that you're just a bit weaker than Judith. I give the first place to her, and I just <laughs> want to be a bit worse than Judith. <laughs> so who is number two at the moment in Hungary? Chang Hoang. 
And what's her rating? Um, I think 2480. Okay, so it's not out of... No, I would like to get 25. 2500. And of course the grandma's. <laughs> so you both have to got the ambition to become... We're both ambitious. Okay. And of course, working for Chess 24 because we love Chess 24. There you go. <laughs> it's our family. It's the, the Chess 24 family. There you go. <laughs> We're getting <laughs> thumbs up because we're actually today, for all of you, people are saying, where are these guys? Because normally they see us in the studio and um, we're actually in the, in the hall. We're actually in the main hall. Um, and there are, is everybody around us, really, all of our staff. So they're all giving us a thumbs up. It's, it's nice to have a different uh, location. And yeah, as we've got comments here, should, we should clarify that you are Hungarian, but you live in Spain. Yes, I live in Madrid. In I've been living in Madrid for four years by now. Four years, and uh, before I lived in London, actually, also for almost a year. I love Spain. I love <laughs> Spanish culture, Spanish food, Spanish music, Spanish people. <laughs> I think I'm going to stay in Spain. Um, and I love learning languages, so that mm -hmm. was also another extra. Because, uh, because you speak English, Russian, Hungarian. <laughs> Should have said it. German. Have started. Uh, four German. years of German at high school, but passive knowledge and That's Spanish. That's like five languages. And one year of Finnish course at university, which uh, I Finnish. I didn't really succeed. <laughs> at. Did you finish it? I finished the course with the highest grade, they but I don't speak Finnish. But you can it's a read funny language. Finnish. You can. Read. But yeah, isn't it no, related but, uh, to Hungarian? Is that why? No, you... that's why I signed up for the course because they say Hungarian and Finnish language are from the same root. And uh, so I thought that this must be the easiest language uh, for And then Hungarian. you found out there's absolutely nothing absolutely in common. Absolutely. No, <laughs> you need to learn the rules. And if you know the rules, then you say that kota and has are the same word. So kota, has, that's the same house in Hungarian and in Finnish. It's the same word. Don't you see that it's exactly the same? No. Yeah, that's why. Because the K so and the, the beginning and then a T in between vowels. Uh, oh, so the, the evolution, the etymology. Time, okay. And, no, you can't learn Finnish. At least not me. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Sophie? Because you, you, you actually, you both speak English because you both studied English. Right? Yeah. Um, I speak uh, English, Georgian, of course, uh, Russian, and Spanish. But I'm a bit shy when uh, I, I speak you're... with uh, native people. We know you're shy. Uh, and I'm learning Dutch. You're. Le oh, sorry. <coughs> You're learning Dutch. Yeah. Now, there's a reason for that, isn't there? Yeah, because um, I'm moving to Holland after marriage and I need to pass the exam uh, to have permission to live there. And how is your Dutch? Because I, I tried Dutch once. Did you? Yeah, and, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my impression too and Dutch. Hoken and yeah. Hoken and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. The, well, you know, is not a problem for me because in Georgian we have... You have a lot of her. So, okay. a lot of, you should listen okay. to her talking to her family every yeah. night and she's like... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sounds yeah. like you got a bad cold, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so you're learning Dutch? I'm learning Dutch and it's quite difficult. <laughs> it's quite difficult. Oh my goodness. All right, fair enough. Yeah. We did get a question that popped up here that I, I wanted to address. We're, we're going from di different topics. Do you think so. I look like 37? I hope uh, not. I hope not. I think Blen Where's Blender, how dare you? Blender, I think he's being trying to be funny. <laughs> no, you're actually 27, 27 and 24. 24. So, in a very good age. Um, Silver, a premium member, so we'll say hello to Silver. Hi, Silver, thank you I for your question. He's got a little daughter, eight years old. How does he motivate her to play chess? Uh, how can he you know, get her to start playing? Because it's difficult, especially nowadays, where there are so many other things that kids have got from iPads and all the interactive stuff. How, what would you recommend for his daughter? Or for him to, how did your parents or your fathers, like, you know, or your mother, you know, teach you the game? I think I told you the secret already, Kinder Chocolate. Um, <laughs> but there, so I let Sophie go answer the question too. How do you think? Yeah. Well, after they know how to move the pieces, they should definitely check the school at Chess 24. Then there are video series. I love it. <laughs> We've taught you so well. I'm so proud. <laughs> okay, so let's, but, but is there a way to 
you know, you've got a young daughter, what can make her interested in chess? Or do you just think that either she's interested or she's not? Either she will like it or she won't. I think that's the way he yeah. tries to do what yeah. he or she likes. And if she doesn't like it, then I think it's not worth pushing too much. Many times um, when I used to give lessons to children, even four, five year old children, and uh, when I see that it's only the, the parents that really want him or her to be in class, that's, that's bad. I think it's the child that, that needs to want to play, that loves chess. Okay, if you love chess, come into class. If you don't want to play, just please don't force your children to come to the class. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I also know many examples uh, that kids are first uh, in love with chess. They love to solve puzzles, but after some time they just lose the interest and um, you can see it. They don't play chess anymore, they uh, don't compete, they don't solve, and you should not push. I think that's a fair statement. I mean, it's funny because, uh, you know, when I started chess, I hated chess. Really? really? Yeah. When my dad first showed me chess, I was like, well, yeah. So why did you have to play? Show me the football. Show me the football. Let's go to the park and play football. And then suddenly, I started playing. I was like, oh, this is okay. And then I went to a local club, and from there, it all started. So... It's a very difficult one to answer Silver's yeah. question to get your daughter to play. Show her the moves, show her how it can be fun, but if she really doesn't enjoy it, then um, there's I always... To, I used to make games for children, like you, you take the knight and you put pieces of chocolate on the board, so you need to take the knight and know how the knight moves the chocolate. <laughs> to, take, to capture the pieces of chocolate and then you can eat the chocolate. That's really there nice. There are tricks like this. That's amazing. That, that's really nice. Maybe you could train your pets like that as well, like... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's so, so, so... A night move is the most difficult yes. to learn. As a child. That's why yeah. we ate a lot of chocolates at primary school with yeah. those children in Spain. So not only can they learn chess, but they can get really fat as well. The children, right? As well. Right. Right. Dark chocolate. Dark, ah, dark, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. <laughs> Love dark chocolate. Yeah. yeah. And it's good I'm for sorry. the brain. Yeah. Is it? It's that's what they good. say. Yeah. They, they say, it, yeah, I mean... Yeah, let's not talk about dark chocolate because I will. Uh, yeah, we got a comment from Karia. Karia, another premium member. Karia says, "My daughter is six. I pushed her too hard last year to learn chess, uh, and then she lost interest. Uh, now I have a tab with Play Magnus and Chess Twenty Four, and now she can't stop playing chess." Oh, that's yeah. really good. So that's if, great, if it's right? If that's her that wants to play chess, if that's, she loves it, just. That's how enjoy back. it. <laughs> That's great. So it means that there are ways, the tablets, the new stuff we have, and of course, at Chess24, we've got the great mobile app. I cannot, we'll just do a bit of self-promotion just for a second, but <laughs> we have to recommend, of all of you premium members especially, who haven't got the, the mobile app, even if you're not premium, download the app. It is by far the best mo uh, chess app in the business. I agree. Uh, Completely. You can watch the video series now. You can watch all of the live broadcasts. You can even, of course, of course, you can play games. The tactics trainer is brilliant. The tactics too. trainer is great, and you can get your kids involved. And your kids can. Do really you do the tactics trainer? I do. I do the I tactics do trainer. I do also, but my. I, do, I, 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 yeah, I, have a, I have a terrible hit. Yeah. I mean, really, <laughs> Me too. about Me too. 1800 or <laughs> Me something. Too. But it's so much fun that you can win the rating by actually solving tactics. In, yeah. If you take a book of tactics and you try solving, it's not that much of uh, entertainment because you're just like, okay, write down the moves, mm. check the solution. But on Chess24, when you practice solving puzzles, you are winning or losing rating. It's much more fun. I agree. And I also, oh, I always want to have very high elo in that because of my missed tactics, <laughs> but uh, I don't... I'm not successful. It's not easy, but I think it's, it's a good way easy. of practice. It's, it's a easy. great, it's a great it's, way, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's even the top players, to yes. just to go off subject slightly, but the top players, they all, they all, they all solve the app. Carlson, Caruana, these guys—they're just doing exercises before their game. Sure. They do a bit of opening coverage, then they want to get the mind fresh. So, tactics training, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you are training every day. At least half an hour. That's important. It is important. Okay, let's let's uh, carry on then. We've got a few more questions. Keep them coming, guys. Uh, we won't probably be on there for too much longer. Uh, but 
if there are any really interesting questions. About 10 minutes, so try and get a good question in now. Uh, but we'll just go to something slightly random. How about a nice random question? Right. To kind of finish things off and maybe one more from the crowd. We've got a question here from Let's Beast, who's a premium member. And Let's Beast says, you know how in some sports, uh, and I, I'm a big fan of this, by the way, I'm just telling you right now, if I ever create a chess tournament, this will be part of the regulations. They have what's called walk-on music or entrance music. Mm -hmm. So in the darts, in uh, some football matches, they have a special song. And I thought, why can't we have that in chess? Especially in, let's say, you can't do it in an open tournament. But let's say in a 10 round round robin, when you're introducing the players, you, you have a piece of music that, that really, you know, and you choose that piece of music. What song would you choose? What song would you choose? When you're coming to that stage, you've got the whole world watching you. It's the Women's World Championships or something. Very and you have interesting. To it's what? not an easy choice. It's not an easy question. Is there <laughs> no, a song? No, it's not an easy. But now that I think of it, I think I would choose um, any from David Garrett or the piano guys, the covers. Like David Garrett the Fifth or Smooth Criminal? Criminal? Smooth Criminal yeah. in piano. Uh, no, just David Garrett uh, plays violin. The violin. Yeah. Smooth. I, I think I've seen that. Smooth Criminal in violin. I yeah. can see that. See, that's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> dun, 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 <laughs> yeah. Singing any, any are you? Okay? I mean, that would be. <laughs> that would. Yeah, you could. I could see that on the on, and that would be that and shows. And smooth criminal, you know, it's yeah, chess it means, game, smooth criminal. So you're gonna rob your opponent. Yeah. You're gonna steal, <laughs> steal, steal his pieces. Yeah. And uh, okay, smooth criminal. I like that. That would I like work. it too. Anna, what about you? I couldn't choose one. Um, I don't have a favorite song now. But what I know is that I always love the songs that are very positive. I think I'm a positive person and a cheerful person, so I like songs that transmit this message. Anything that is like Walking on Sunshine, that it's my life and walking I'm so happy. <laughs> what about Walking on Sunshine? I love that song. I'm I listen to it sunshine. very often. I can see you walking to the stage now. You're not even walking, you're skipping. You're like... Just a big Flying. Yeah. So you go to the game. I like it. Yeah, I think that's a nice representation. Of you guys, but you can I, see Miss Tactics, smooth criminal, like I can see it. Yeah, you can, can see, see you can feel it. And I can strategy. see strategy, <laughs> just shiny. Yeah, don't just you think shiny. it would be great for chess? <laughs> I think it would be great for a tournament, and um, I hope one day they do it. Because you should I, write a letter to Fida, maybe. <laughs> I don't think Fide would accept it, um, but certainly, you know, maybe a, a super tournament like a Norway Chess or a London Chess Classic, with some speakers. Why not? It might just make... Anyway, interesting question. Thanks, uh, thanks, Let's Beast. Perhaps just one or two more at most. Um, we have gone through a lot of the questions that were in the article. Um, have we got any more in the chat? Uh, yeah, okay, here's one from Kaya again. This is it. back to female chess players. Very quickly, is it possible, or how do professional female chess players make a living? How, I mean, is there, is there enough money? Do you, I mean, how do you guys actually survive? Actually, it's very bad because the price fund uh, in women is very low. I mean, uh, it's terrible. You can see also on uh, Grand Prix uh, series that uh, the first price of women uh, uh, Place is the last price of uh, men's Grand Prix. Mm. That's not fair. <laughs> okay. Anna? Um, I agree with Sophie that the prices are not very nice. Um, you must be lucky. You, sh you should uh, you should born under a lucky star. For instance, now in Hungary, um, the Olympic team, the men and the women's team also, we get a scholarship, which is a mm -hmm. monthly support so that yeah. we can play chess. Because we also have that in Georgia. Oh. That's good. So in some countries, um, if you are a member of the Olympic team, they support you with a monthly scholarship. That mm -hmm. uh, The purpose of this is that you don't have to have a Monday to Friday um, 
10 to 10 job. Yeah. 9 to 5, as we say. And in Spain, it would be 10, 10 to 10, to 10. <laughs> with the siesta. Um, and I think if you have this scholarship, um, you train enough, you go to some tournaments, and you do some other work related to chess. Well, we are chess authors, commentators, presenters. Uh, but other female players, I think uh, they give lessons. They play for clubs. They in, play uh, leagues, right. In the leagues of other countries. Um, and that's it, I think. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, things are improving. I think we yes. know, you know, right? Yeah. So, for example, a tournament that's very close to my heart is the tournament in Gibraltar every year. With a very nice prize. Amazing prize. The, prize, best, prize right? the best prize, I would right. say. Right. You yes. know, it's, what is it, £15,000 for... Yeah, a lot. Top, and I mean, the tournament is excellent. And the tournament is excellent. With all the side events. So I think things are improving. Yeah. And we, we hope that we they... We hope it would be better, even we, better. We, we hope they... One last question, because I think now is probably a good time to wrap up. It's uh, it's a good uh, good hour, and you girls will probably have a few things to finish up before you go. If you two played, who would win? None if you, of us. No, <laughs> no. We played once. No. Oh, you played we already. We played last year in October in Hogeven. Yeah. And okay. we made a draw because. Uh, I tried to play in a positional way, get a nice end game, but she was defending very well with black and we had to agree in a draw. So it was a draw? Yeah. I think we both... I want to see another <laughs> match. Um, I want to see smooth criminal <laughs> versus walking sunshine. on sunshine. I want to see you trying to smash her and you trying to slowly outplay her. That's what I want to see. I just wanted to add that I think that we, would be we difficult. would not be able to play against yeah. each other. We are too good of a friend, so... No, we <laughs> that's no excuse. That is well, no excuse. We really can't play against that each other. That is no other. excuse. If you're on the chessboard, there are no more friends. You are enemies. And then as Tell soon as the game... Tell me which is better, tactics or strategy? Both which is of better. them is good. Yeah, they, well, you need both. That's why right? it's draw. That, that's why it's a draw. <laughs> that's the explanation. Okay. <laughs> Um, fair enough. Okay, well, on that note, I think it's a, a good time for us to uh, end our very first After Dark here at Chess24. Uh, we're going to say huge thanks to both Sopigo and Anna for being Thank you. great thanks guests. You. We thanks now know everything about you, um, which is great. I hope everybody at home has been, uh, who's watched has enjoyed this. And um, thank you for the questions as well. And if you'd like to ask questions in the future, become premium. And of course, enjoy the series as well, produced by these two lovely young ladies who have, uh, well, you've been in the studio this week producing uh, We've a series a lot. as we well. Will, yeah, yeah, we hope you will like you, Well, this one, we series. won't reveal it just yet, but <laughs> yeah. it's a great series. Check we out what we... it, actually. Yeah. Check, we check out... <laughs> can, we, can we reveal it? Can we reveal it? Okay, the cat's out of the bag. What's your <laughs> series that you've produced this week? About young Magnus. Magnus young Magnus Carlsen. Yeah. Young Magnus Carlsen, okay. We look at the best games of Carlsen from the year 2001 until the moment he becomes the world's youngest grandmaster at the time. Yeah. There you go. Check that out. Become a premium member. And, uh, well, for now, uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, see you all very soon. All the best from Chess24. Thank you. Thanks Bye. for watching. Bye. Have a nice day.